November 2021 marked Red Dead Online's third birthday. The game has changed and evolved greatly over that time, so I think it only makes sense to revisit my role guides and update them to reflect all of those changes. But before all that, I believe it's necessary to put together a clear, concise beginner guide for anyone just getting started with the game. To this day, these are the messages I see the most. People seem overwhelmed when jumping into the game for the first time and don't really know what to do. So, in addition to my updated role guide videos, I prepared this Red Dead Online beginner's guide video as we head into 2022. I started a new character and made my way through the mode once again, taking in all of the changes firsthand and in real time. Today, I'll do what Rockstar does not break all the important stuff down for any Red Dead Online beginner in a simple and digestible form. We'll go into the key gameplay elements, what you should worry about first, what you could safely ignore, and how to quickly start making cash, ranking up, and collecting gold. Finally, I'll briefly outline each of the game's five roles, which is the real meat of the mode. What is the best role to start with? What roles are best for you based on your playstyle and preferences? And is it actually worth spending any real life money on gold, the game's premium currency? Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. This is Red Dead Online Made Simple, the 2022 Beginner Guide. I think the best way to break down Red Dead Online is to start from the top. What is the overall goal here? What should any new player be looking to do? From there, we'll go into as much detail as we need to, nothing more. Like GTA Online before it, Red Dead Online can be overwhelming for any beginner. There are tons of menus, tons of text, tons of icons littered across the map, and so many different gameplay systems working together to create this awesome world. Becoming an expert will take time, but luckily for those just getting started, I can safely tell you, you don't need to worry about most of this stuff. It's fluff. It's unimportant when just getting started, so let's filter out all the crap and go over what is important. After creating your character and following the tutorials, the world opens up quite a bit. Before asking where do I go next, we first need to establish our main goals here in Red Dead Online. Ultimately, we are looking to secure three precious resources. We want as much as possible, as quickly as possible, and as easily as possible. Oh, and we want to actually enjoy ourselves while playing the game. It's a lot of fun, so as much as we can help it, we're going to avoid what I'd consider grinding. Our three key resources are XP, cash, and gold. We can get XP by playing through missions, completing daily challenges, facing off against other players in the PvP modes, the list goes on. For the sake of a beginner, we're only going to be focusing on a small number of XP gaining methods because honestly, it's not that hard to gain an adequate amount of XP. Gaining XP is important because it allows your character to rank up through the game, and by ranking up, you unlock new goodies that become available to buy at a shop. While many of these goodies are cosmetic, others are very useful and have actual gameplay implications. How do you buy those goodies? With cash, of course. Like XP, there are a number of different ways to collect cash, but today we'll only look at the methods that get you over the beginner hump. Luckily, like XP, cash is also fairly easy to come by during the early game. As long as you follow today's video, you really shouldn't ever run into any trouble when it comes to cash or XP. Finally, we have gold, our premium currency. Gold is by far the hardest of the three key resources to collect in Red Dead Online. It's also very important, as you'll need gold to unlock each of the game's five roles. After main story missions, the roles are the star of the show in Red Dead Online, and honestly, they're a ton of fun. Thankfully, getting enough gold to pay for your first two roles isn't too much of a grind, and comes naturally as you play through the game at a normal pace. We'll definitely get into the best methods for collecting as much gold as possible, as quickly as possible, as well as whether or not it's worth spending real money to get gold. So now that we know what we're looking for, it's time to look at the hows. How much cash, gold, and XP do I need as a beginner, and how do I collect these resources? Turns out, it's pretty simple. Again, there are a lot of menus and options, 
but in the end, a lot is fluff that only serves to confuse new players. A lot of the stuff you're able to purchase as you rank up is purely cosmetic, and a lot of the icons on the map or playable game modes are just slower and more difficult ways to acquire the resources we need. So if you're thinking, why didn't he mention the awards, or why didn't he talk about this or that, it's because it's not important. We're trying to make this whole process clean and easy. Simply put, here is our goal to start out. We want 15 gold bars, which will allow us to buy our first roll. We want $1,500, which will allow us to buy one of the best horses in the game. That number will also give us enough disposable income to spend freely on smaller items we'll always need, like health boosters, stamina boosters, or ammo. Finally, when it comes to our rank, there's really no super important rank we need to hit today. The most important unlocks that come from ranking up would be new weapons, more powerful ammo for those weapons, and quality of life items like a fast travel post for your camp. But for beginners, none of that is all that important. I was able to reach our goal of 15 gold bars and $1,500 using only my beginner weapons, a carbine repeater and a cattleman revolver. So how do we reach this goal? Simple. First things first, we are going to play through the main story. These missions can differ depending on your honor level, but the end result is much the same. After completing the initial nine A Land of Opportunities missions, I was at rank 12, saved about $766, and had 4.45 gold bars. So about halfway through our cash goal, but only a third of the way through our gold goal. After completing those main story missions, you should be getting a good feel for the game, not to mention a decent amount of resources in your pocket. Next, we're gonna head to Saint Denis to unlock the Blood Money missions. Blood Money crime missions work much like the Stranger missions that are playable by speaking to the NPCs indicated by these orange icons on the map. Only difference is, these Blood Money missions are in three parts. There's a fun little structure here, and I personally have more fun with them than the regular old Stranger missions. Best of all, they pay out in cash, XP, and gold, so we can continue to edge closer and closer to our goal. There are six of these three-parters, which means 18 missions in total. After completing those, I was sitting at about 10 gold, rank 19, and $1,400 in cash. We've just about reached our cash goal. We'll hit $1,500 no problem by completing a few more tasks that generate XP, cash, and gold. Speaking of gold, we're two thirds of the way toward our goal of 15 gold bars. For the final five, let's dip into some new gameplay modes we haven't yet explored. By holding right on the D-pad, you could open up your satchel to read a number of letters. One of those letters is the telegram. Telegram missions are a bit harder than the Blood Money missions when it comes to difficulty, but they offer some unique mission design as well. Completing them will bring us even closer to our 15 gold bar goal. Despite their increased difficulty, they pay out a similar amount of cash, gold, and XP when compared to the Blood Money missions. That's a little bit odd, right? As collecting gold becomes our number one priority, it's probably the right time to break down the mechanics of gold a little bit further. How exactly do gold payouts work, and how can we maximize our reward when completing a mission? Gold payouts work the exact same way no matter which kind of mission you do. Blood money, telegram, stranger missions, anything that pays out gold. It all depends on an invisible timer ticking down in the background. That's right, not the timer that pops up on your screen during the mission, you know, that would make too much sense. Indeed, another timer is ticking down in the background as soon as the mission starts. So if you hit start on a stopwatch just as the mission begins, you could track the real timer that will indicate how much gold you're paid in the end. Incoming baffling rockstar logic. The longer you take to complete the mission, the more gold you receive in the end. They do something similar with the payouts in GTA Online, and it sucks, everyone hates it, it makes no sense, but it is what it is. If you want, you can leave the game idle for a few minutes before completing a mission to increase your payout. However, I do want to make it clear that when I played through the game again and calculated all of the numbers for this video, I did not wait down the timer pretty much at all. All those Blood Money missions, I finished as quickly as possible. 
The only times I waited down the timer was to capture this gameplay you're seeing right now. And I think I had to pee one time. So really waiting down the timer is not necessary, but by all means, if you wanna get the largest payout of gold possible and can multitask with a TV show or a podcast, feel free to wait down that clock and take advantage of the stupid ass mechanic Rockstar put in this game. After the main story, blood money, and telegram missions, you should be very close to the 15 gold bar goal. There are a couple more solid ways to get gold in Red Dead Online, and by far the most important is completing daily challenges. At first, you'll only have seven general daily challenges, but you'll unlock more role-specific challenges when you purchase a role and level up through the ranks. Unfortunately, the daily challenge payouts have been heavily nerfed compared to how they were when the game first launched. Despite this, keeping up with the challenges is still a quick and easy way to collect gold, and every little bit counts when you're just starting out. Often, at least one or two of the daily challenges are super easy and should only take a minute or two to complete. Then, as time goes on, your gold payout will be multiplied based on how many days in a row you complete challenges. It all adds up surprisingly quickly when you're just starting out. If you need help locating a plant or animal for the purposes of daily challenges, be sure to check out the masterful John Robke Red Dead Online map, an absolutely wonderful resource for any Red Dead Online player. This thing will make your life so much easier. You'll be collecting that daily challenge gold super quick and getting to learn the map and what could be found where, which is obviously very important if you wanna get better at the game. The link to the map could be found in the video description and we'll be coming back to it time and time again here on the channel. Learn how to use this incredible resource, trust me. Speaking of maps, we also can't forget about treasure maps. You receive a treasure map every 10 ranks, so you should have one or two by now if you're following along with the video and leveling up at around the same pace that I am. Treasure maps will spawn a chest at a certain location on the map. Using Eagle Eye, you could find the yellow mist coming from the chest, and inside you'll get a huge cash and gold reward, often more than one full nugget. That's huge at this point in the game and should really help you get closer to the 15 gold bar goal. If you're having trouble finding the exact spot that the treasure has spawned, again, I point you to the map. The map shall guide you. Finally, if you're still looking for ways to get gold, may I recommend a newer addition to the game, Call to Arms mode. It's basically a horde mode which is self-explanatory. Waves of enemies come splashing in, and it's up to you and other players to take them all out. Find a good spot to hide, and pop them in the head with your repeater. Again and again, and again and again and again. It's a pretty time-consuming process, but it's all action, so if you're looking for a more involved way to collect some gold that actually requires a good amount of skill and mastery of the game's combat system, Call to Arms is the way to go. You should have those 15 gold bars by now, but if you're still looking for ways to collect some gold, I'd recommend always keeping an eye on your online menu and the Rockstar Games Twitter and Newswire website. Certain modes will hand out a bonus payout for a limited time, so be sure to read this menu carefully if you're looking to try something different and get some solid gold in the process. So we finally reached the 15 gold bar goal. It's time to head over to Rhodes and purchase our first role, the Bounty Hunter. Now, you might be thinking, but I don't want to be a Bounty Hunter. I want to collect. I want to trade. I want to bootleg shine. Well, hey, dude, it's your gold and you could do whatever you want with it. However, I would personally recommend every beginner start with Bounty Hunter as their first role for one simple reason. Bounty Hunter is the only role that pays out gold when you complete a bounty mission. In other words, it gives us another precious method of collecting gold, which means an easier time collecting the gold needed to purchase the other four roles. I'll have a new 2022 Bounty Hunter guide video up shortly after this beginner guide goes live on my channel. Check it out if you want a full deep dive into the role, including what you unlock at each rank, how to maximize role XP and payouts as quickly and easily as possible, and what role items are worth buying. For the purposes of this beginner guide, 
we're only going to skim over the role and focus on what's most important for beginners. After unlocking the Bounty Hunter, we have another goal, and it might sound a bit familiar. That's right, get 15 gold bars. This is the general Red Dead Online gameplay loop until you've unlocked all of the roles. However, with Bounty Hunter, we can still obey our golden rule. Thou shalt collect gold and progress through the game quickly without resorting to pure grinding. We're able to do so thanks mainly to the legendary bounties. Legendary bounties are more elaborate than regular old bounties, but less elaborate than the proper main story missions that feature full cutscenes. Nonetheless, I consider them essential for anyone looking to get the most out of Red Dead Online. They're a lot of fun, and each offers a totally unique mission design, with some being downright insane. Oh yeah, that's what I like to see in my Red Dead. Get weird with it, Rockstar. Look at this, just look at this, this is insane, I love it. By completing them, you'll receive a good chunk of roll XP and cash, while the gold payout follows the same formula we went over before. After bringing in a legendary bounty, there is a cooldown timer of about 45 real life minutes before you can attempt another one. This is the perfect time to clear out your daily challenges, especially your new Bounty Hunter daily challenge. It ain't much, but any additional roll XP and gold at this point is very helpful. Of course, you could also play regular bounty missions as the timer cools down, which will get you even more roll XP and gold. Hitting rank 5 will unlock another Bounty Hunter challenge, and then another at rank 10, which just means potentially more daily gold for you. Finally, why not go through the gold methods we went over earlier as the timer cools down? All of this gets us closer and closer to our 15 gold bar goal. After completing all 10 legendary bounties and collecting gold during downtime, you should end up with about 10 gold bars. For the final five, it's the same process we just did. Treasure maps, more bounties, daily challenges, you get the drill by now. After only two days of play, I was able to get to the 15 gold bar goal once again. Now it's time to visit our magical friend Madame Nazar and pick up our second roll, the Collector. Once again, it's your gold. I can't force you to buy this roll over any of the others. But like Bounty Hunter, I have my reasons for recommending Collector in particular. Bounty Hunter is most important because it's a solid method for collecting gold. Collector is second most important because this is going to be our way to collect tons of XP and cash going forward. Indeed, you've just unlocked the best way to get cash and XP quickly in Red Dead Online. And that's it. With the collector roll under your belt, I officially consider this point the end of the beginner's guide portion of the game. If you made it this far, you are officially well on your way to being the baddest outlaw in all the West or the baddest animal research person. For all of you new collectors out there, I encourage you all to check out my 2022 collector guide video for a deep dive into the role's mechanics, various payouts, how the daily cycles and randomness works, and how to maximize your profit in as little time as possible. For beginners, the role could be broken down fairly simply. Do the daily role challenges and don't waste your money on the in-game maps. Follow the John Robke map, throw on a podcast, and collect complete sets of collectibles. By selling a complete set of collectibles to Madame Nazar, you're rewarded with a ton of cash and a ton of XP. You'll only have access to a small number of collectibles at first, but as you rank up through the roll, you'll unlock the items needed to find the more valuable collectibles. You'll be a master collector in no time at all, as long as you check out my collector roll guide video. And with that, we could go back to the beginning of this video and review our three overall main goals. With Bounty Hunter and Collector unlocked, we now have access to the game's very best methods of collecting gold, XP, and cash. And your life going forward in Red Dead Online just got a whole lot easier. At this point, there's really only one more question to ask. What now? With Bounty Hunter and Collector unlocked, you have the best methods of collecting gold, cash, and XP. So from there, it's really up to you. You're free to choose what's next, depending on what you love the most about Red Dead, its world, and its various mechanics. Your main priority should be unlocking the next three roles. 
Trader costs 15 gold bars, while Moonshiner and Naturalist cost 25. It's a steep fee for those last two, but it's still more than worth your time to collect the gold and check them out for yourself. Only after doing that would I recommend spending gold on anything else, like the prestigious Bounty Hunter license, which will set you back another 15 gold for 10 additional Bounty Hunter ranks, or an Outlaw Pass, which could cost up to 40 gold bars. For a more detailed look at each of the roles, be sure to check out the role guides on my channel. But for the purposes of this video, I'll give you a quick overview of the three remaining roles, and you can make the choice for yourself. Trader involves going out into the world and hunting animals. By bringing back their pelts or full carcasses to crypts at your camp, he could break them down into materials. Once enough time passes and enough materials have been broken down, these bars here fill up, and once full, you could head out and deliver the goods to a nearby town. You're paid a huge amount of XP and cash for your efforts, but it takes so long to fill these bars that you're better off just collecting collectibles and selling full sets if it's cash and XP you're looking for. Nonetheless, Trader is a lot of fun, and if your favorite thing about Red Dead is going out to hunt rare animals and trying to keep their carcass or pelts in the best condition possible, this is absolutely the role for you. Also, since this is the only other 15 gold bar role available to you, it may be wise to get this one first, simply because it unlocks another set of daily roll challenges for you to complete, which means more potential daily gold that could be put towards the purchase of those more expensive rolls. Next up, we have the Naturalist. After paying the 25 gold bar fee, we meet Harriet Davenport. She is just wonderful. Armed with new sedative ammo for your varmint rifle, you can now help Professor Harriet fulfill her dream of a complete Pokedex. Find and track, kill, skin, study, sedate, sample, and photograph each and every animal in the game. But that's not all. In addition to the regular old animals we've been dealing with up until now, Naturalist also introduces 42 rare legendary animals that can be found in the world of Red Dead only in very specific locations and under very specific weather conditions. I can confirm that finding all of these legendaries is the ultimate test of one's patience. Just check out my Legendary Animals video for more on all of that fun. That's still not all. Harriet's rival, Gus McMillan, also joins the game with Naturalist. While sampling animals for Harriet is nice and fun, the real goods from this role are provided by Gus. Kill and trade in the pelts of legendary animals to this dude and get some of the best outfits in the entire game in return. Look at that. Beautiful. If you love all the various wildlife in Red Dead Online, are interested in kick-ass outfits, or have always wondered what it would be like to complete a Pokédex in the Red Dead engine, the Naturalist is absolutely the role for you. It's more expensive, but the content is absolutely there to keep you busy for a long, long time. Finally, we have Moonshiner. First things first, you'll need to reach rank 5 as a trader before you'll even be able to purchase the role. From there, pay the 25 gold fee, and you'll meet Maggie Fike, the queen of bootleg moonshine. This role involves cooking moonshine at your very own moonshining shack. Indeed, this is the first piece of real estate you'll be buying in Red Dead Online. To cook the most valuable flavored moonshine, you'll need to provide your cook with the right ingredients. Explore the game's world for specific plants, or even visit the general store to pick up the fruits or vegetables the recipe calls for. Adorable. When you wait long enough and those bars fill up, you can deliver the moonshine for a cash and XP reward, an activity that works much like the trader deliveries. However, the real draw of this role, in my mind, is access to seven all-new fully fleshed out main story missions. A Life of Shine is wonderful, and I strongly encourage everyone who plays Red Dead Online to unlock and play these story missions. It truly makes the Moonshiner role stand out from the rest, delivering on an experience that is one of a kind. So if exploring the world for plants, cooking and delivering bootleg goods, and more main story missions sounds good to you, consider saving up for and purchasing Moonshiner. On that note, one last thing before we wrap up here. Real money. Is it worth spending any real money on Red Dead Online's gold? The answer is no. Just look at this, grind your favorite activity over and over, and you should end up with more than enough gold to afford all of the cool stuff this game has to offer. 
But let's say your uncle gave you $20 for your birthday and you don't know what to spend it on. If you're gonna spend any real money on Red Dead Online, I'd say the special one-time offer of $4.99 for 25 gold bars makes a ton of sense. $5 basically buys you either the Moonshiner or Naturalist roll without any gold grinding needed on your part. And while free content updates are basically the norm for games these days, back in the olden times, you used to have to spend money to buy new DLC for your favorite game. In that sense, is Moonshiners with not only its role element, but also a bunch of awesome new story missions worth $5? I would personally say absolutely yes. But beyond that, I'd save my money and collect all the gold that I need at the pace that I'm comfortable with. And with that, we are going to wrap it up for today and the 2022 Red Dead Online Beginner's Guide. I really wanted to keep this shorter, but as it turns out, the game has evolved quite a bit over the last three years, so I did my best keeping it as simple and straightforward as possible, while also making sure I still cover every important element of the game for any players just getting started out there. So if you like this video and want to see more Red Dead Online guides just like this one, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's still hard to believe we're at over 50,000 subscribers here on the channel, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for hitting that big red button and sticking around. Luckily for you, Red Dead Online keeps on evolving, so there's a lot more content in the works coming your way. Be sure to check out the video description for links to my five Roll Guy videos, which will help you continue to progress through this wonderful game. In the very near future, I'll have all new, updated 2022 guide videos for the Bounty Hunter and Collector roles here on the channel. Also, look forward to a short follow-up video for this beginner guide, where I'll go through a couple of tips that may be useful for anyone still having trouble getting through this initial section of the game. But until next time, thanks so much for watching everyone, and take care.